is Andrew, and in this video, I'm going to show you Akimi's Tyco and Abstract Data's Octo Controller ADE32. The sounds you just heard were made entirely from Akimi's Tyco being triggered and modulated by the Octo Controller by Abstract Data. Akimi's Tyco is an FM drum synthesizer using original Yamaha ICs. You can track one volt per octave, so you don't necessarily have to use it for drums. In fact, right now, I don't think I'd really call the sounds that I was making drums. It has some pretty useful features. Uh, you can do triggers, accents, and chokes, meaning that um, whenever something gets gated in here as an accent, it'll make that note you know, be more emphasized, or choke will kill the sound that's currently playing at the time. So technically, you can kind of make, um, I guess I, similar to a hi-hat opening and closing, you can choke a hi-hat, similar to when you close a hi-hat after you hit it when it's open. You could choke the sound that's going with a gate. So ideally, you'd probably want to trigger this with something like the very gate and the voltage block. Um, however, you can trigger with anything, of course. So I'm using the Octo Controller because it's something new that I got. And all I'm doing is I have the first output just giving a gate at a certain rate. I think it's like eighth notes or quarter notes. Then I have an accent going on, you know, half that division. I have a triangle LFO being used to modulate the second release. I have a random sample and hold being generated to modulate the waves output. I have a, an arpeggio, or an arpeggiator kind of thing that this has in it, modulating the pitch, which is how you're getting those different notes. And then I have another sample and hold going into the ratio knob. And so it's kind of just never-ending, evolving sound that you're hearing, and I think it sounds really cool. We start pulling stuff out here. So now you're just hearing the arpeggiator and the trigger, the accent, and that's it. Well, I do have this thing going through a filter, but that's, that's not significant in this video. So one thing I can do is I can get the end frequency And what that does is when you hit a drum, you know, you kind of hit a bass drum from that, you go, kind of hits a high note and it falls down. So you can modulate that, that sound. If I get this speed, it sounds really slow. Here now that the frequency is falling down. I turn off the second release. This first release is going to control kind of the, the release or how long the note sustained. This algo, I'm assuming this stands for algorithm. Uh, typically when I get modules, I don't read the manual. I just play with them for a while. <laughs> so what it's doing is that it's, it's kind of making the sound and when the release is long, it's just going to kind of repeat it, which is why I get that fluctuating sound. So now I have it actually going up. Play with the waves. And add some feedback onto this. Makes it a little crazier. Ratio uh, changes the ratio between the two different frequencies, and you know, this thing is frequency modulated, so you can not just control one volt per octave, but control a second one, but another thing you can do is use the ratio. Get some cool sounds. If I turn up my speed, it's going a little crazy now. There we go, that's a cool sound. So now, if I look for one of my frequency and holds that I made before, or sorry, my sample and holds, it's a purple wire right here. Where do I want to put that in? But, uh, 
do waves. That's pretty cool. Now another thing I can do is, I have two outputs down here I'm not actually even using, but I can go down to them with the Octo Controller. I can do Output Type for ARPS. I'll make it that speed, whatever that is. I'll rip this fill out. Oh, actually I need a longer wire for this. That into the second one. So now we have a, an arpeggiated sequence being modulated by a frequency that's determined with a second arpeggiated sequence. So if I get the clock division, sound pretty neat. Let's bring up the whole frequency. <laughs> yes, this is crazy. Nice. Now, because I ripped out the LFO, I have a free LFO, so I can grab that. Let's try putting that into what the release. Actually, I'll put it in the release too, that way I can control it with this attenuator. I should make it go down. This is pretty neat. Uh, it's a little crazy, but that's kind of the point, I guess, with this. Uh, so let's go to gate. And then for this, I want to try the choke parameter. So I'm going to go into this gate that I made, and let's see what this does. So I've got the clock position a little wonky. But now it's kind of like a tremolo effect. Now maybe if I change the output type from gate to pulse. Nice. Yes. <laughs> now, that sounds really cool. I kind of want to make it a little less crazy, though. Sweet. I'm gonna get a pingable off though. I'm gonna put that into the vactral in my filter. And let's make this filter a little crazy.
Sweet. Alright. So that's pretty neat. But now let's just start from scratch. So here I'm just kind of using it as a base, I guess. A really high base, but the low part is a base. I could go into the CV. I could miss, mess with those high notes to make it uh, not so intense. <laughs> now the other part of that might be that this and this Now this is actually really just a bass. Kind of like a distorted bass. So I think at this point, you're probably getting the point. Uh, Kimi's Taiko is really cool. It can offer you know, unlimited amounts of sounds. It can definitely be used as a cool drum type slash percussive element. However, you can make some gentle, I guess, plucky or bell-like tones. You can obviously make some distorted synth-like tones because that's what I'm playing right now. It's very nicely paired with something like the variegate and voltage block. It's also very nicely paired with the Abstract Data Octo Controller. Another uh, cool aspect of this module is that it doesn't come in a random little box. It comes in this nicely branded box, and it's actually not uh, like a cardboard box inside. It's just a plastic thing. So uh, they probably have the best packaging I've ever seen for a Eurorack module. Um, not to say that other companies are necessarily bad. You know, this abstract data um, definitely has a really you know, nice standard packaging. Um, however, you know, other companies just use these kind of... I mean, not like this is bad. It's a cardboard box. Who really cares? But yeah, it's nice to see that uh, ALM uh, in, in Akimi's Tyco, I'm assuming in the other modules, actually put some care into the packaging. Just It's a nice surprise. You know? When you pay, like, I forget what this costs, like three, four, five hundred dollars it's nice to have nice packaging when you pay that kind of money for such a small thing. You know, it does a lot, but at the end of the day, you know, when you buy an iPhone or an iMac or, or really any electronic product that's that's higher end in terms of cost, it comes in nice packaging, especially Apple. Apple pays a lot of care to the packaging, and Akimi's Tyco obviously does too. And, you know, it's a small detail, but it's a nice detail. Anyways, I'm having a lot of fun with Kimi's Tyco, uh, the Octo Controller, and all my other new modules. I'll be posting more videos about the other ones soon, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!